Hello, Hari Hola again. In this module, you'll get a fair understanding about ice and all that ice does. These are the three things you'll walk out when you're done with this module. Ice fundamentals, the building blocks of an ice deployment, and how ice builds all the context. ICE is a network access control and policy enforcement platform. But who provides network access to us? It's the network devices. These are the three main avenues for us to get onto the network. Wired, wireless, and VPN connection. Who needs network access? It's the users and the endpoints. They want to connect to the network to access various services. How do we identify these endpoints? with the help of credentials. This can be passwords, certificates, tokens, or at the least, the endpoint's MAC address. Now, these credentials reach ICE in a process called authentication. There are various authentication protocols that an enterprise can use, depending on the type of network and the type of the endpoints. So essentially, with authentication, you tell ICE who you are. Authentication typically ends with an authorization. So once you revealed your identity to ICE, ICE determines what must be your level of access. The moment an endpoint hits the network, the network devices generate a session ID and shares it with ICE. ICE centrally knows what are all the endpoints in the network and where they are located. So with all this in consideration, how does ICE fare in terms of identity-based access? ICE can talk up to 100,000 network devices, can support up to 1.5 million endpoints, 300,000 internal user accounts, 1 million guest user accounts, and 1 million user certificates that can be issued from ICE. That's quite a lot what ICE can deliver. However, when we look at enterprises today, they do have some infrastructure running that already has some of these identity sources. Like a customer is very likely to have a directory service like Microsoft Active Directory or an LDAP server. They could be ODBC servers hosting some user and device accounts. A PKI infrastructure may already exist to manage certificates. Some mobile device managers and identity providers for single sign-on and so on. The good news is ICE can seamlessly integrate with all those external identity stores and deliver network access control. So what makes up an ICE deployment? These four make up an ICE deployment. The endpoints want to connect to the network. The network devices gates the access. ICE determines who should get what level of access by resolving the identity from the external identity sources. Now let's move on to the next subtopic on how ICE builds context. You might have heard a lot about ICE in the past, have seen or heard that it can tell you who, what, when, where, and how of the endpoints. The question is, how does ICE know all of it? Let me explain. If you looked at the top of the screen, you'll see what context I'm talking about. For instance, now we're going to be talking about the who context. Who? Who's the user? This is quite easy, in fact. Since we discussed how endpoints carry credentials and these credentials are presented to ICE via authentication methods, once someone authenticates, ICE builds a session table listing all the users and their specific association to the network. What? What device it is? Each endpoint that shows up in the network sends out some interesting traffic that reveal the endpoint type. For example, the DHCP class identifier as MSFT tells me that it's a Microsoft workstation. So goes with the other protocol listed here on the top. So either these traffic somehow hits directly to ICE or we can use this tiny feature on the network devices called the device sensor that caches such interesting traffic and passes it on to the ICE over radius. Once ICE receives the attributes, based on the profiling policy, 
it can classify the endpoint into specific device groups. And with the help of a feed service, we can keep the profiling policies up to date. The end result is that you will see endpoint profile associated to the endpoint's MAC address telling us what device it is. When? We can author time-based policies within ICE. Where? There's a lot to this. One simple way to determine the location is to have a location label assigned to the network devices and then tracking where the authentication request is coming in from. If it's coming in from a switch that's labeled as a San Jose Building 19 location, then we can apply specific policies. In a wireless network, the access point's call station ID can be defined with the location name, thereby telling us which location the wireless user or device is. Lastly, if you integrate ICE with Mobility Services Engine, MSE, then we can track the actual physical location of the wireless endpoint as it moves. How? How is someone or something connected? If it's wired, wireless, or VPN, we have these radius attributes that tell us the details of how they're connecting. Posture, or compliance of the endpoint. We need any connect agent on the endpoint for this. We basically can have a posture policy on ICE that tells any connect to check on certain things to consider the endpoint to be compliant. These checks could be OS patch level, antivirus signatures, presence of a USB mass storage, and much more. The authorization policy can be defined to act on the posture result. If someone is compliant, then we can provide full access. If not, we can provide access to the remediation services. Compliance for mobile devices is done by integrating eyes with the mobile device management solutions. We can check on a bunch of things like pin lock, jailbroken status of the mobile devices, and much more. The posture functionality allows us to look and list all the applications installed and running on the endpoints. We can also initiate a kill or an uninstall function for specific applications right from the ICE dashboard. Moving on to the vulnerability context. ICE can integrate with the vulnerability scanners such as Qualys, Rapid7, Tenable Security to control network access based on the CVSS score. CVSS stands for Common Vulnerability Scoring System. This is a number from 1 to 10 that tells the vulnerability status of the endpoint. If the number is higher, it means the endpoint is highly vulnerable. In terms of the flow, let's say the endpoint connects and gets full access. ICE can mark the endpoint for a vulnerability scan and ask the on-prem scanner for a vulnerability assessment. The scanner scans the endpoint and reports the CVSS to its mothership. ICE pulls the score and then applies the authorization policy. If the policy says that a CVSS less than 5 must be quarantined, then ICE will ask the network device to quarantine the access to this endpoint. ICE can build threat context when integrated with AMP or CTA. With AMP, the flow is like this. When an endpoint that is installed with AMP gets infected, it will report this incident to the AMP cloud. I subscribes to this event via sticks and taxi, and then the threat score will show up in ICE dashboard. The administrator can opt to quarantine this user's device later. All right, these are the things that we discussed in this session. ICE deployment is made of four critical components, endpoints, network devices, ICE itself, and the external services. It's all about sessions and session IDs. That's a unique identifier around which the session metadata is built in real time. ICE has answers for who, what, when, where, how, and more. And finally, some advanced threat contexts like posture, vulnerability, and threats need agent and integrations with external security systems. For additional details, please visit cs.co slash selling hyphen ice. Thanks for your time watching this module. We'll go into the details of specific ice features in the next few sessions. Thank you.